What's up, YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with a subscriber Q&A slash comments video. And most of it's going to be tied to Big Bad Toy Story Collector Grade. We're going to be talking about the grading process in general. And we're going to talk about turnaround times. I had a lot of nice feedback from my video with part two of the great turnaround time experiment of 2022. And you guys seem to enjoy taking a look at that video and what came back from Action Figure Authority. And I got some great comments, so I wanted to dig right in. Before I do that, as always, I want to say thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys allow me to make more and better videos. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon supporter, it's patreon.com slash actionfiguregrader. Let's go ahead and dig right in. You guys really came up with some thoughtful commentary. Some of these comments came from Facebook, where I posted on Rogue Five Toys. Some of uh, these comments came from YouTube. So I, I left the names off of some of the Facebook comments just to keep people's names private in the event that they didn't want their name shared. Uh, the first one says, I'm a CAS fan, not going to deny it, but geez, it's hard sending stuff to them. I have, but I'm just wearing I'm just wearing out with the turnaround times. To be honest, I think CAS is tougher on grades than AFA now. Maybe to try and gain some credibility. Who knows? I support them because I do believe in the owners, Ross, Chris, Anthony, and Ken, and they do have great customer service. I also like that they provide pictures, three tier grades, and COAs for all for for the all for the price of grading. Just wish they were a bit faster. They probably do too, and I agree with that. I, I think that they probably do wish that they were faster, um, and I think they need to get faster in order to compete with AFA, especially because AFA not only beat them on that turnaround time experiment, they beat the order that was sent three weeks prior to that. Now, I still have not gotten pictures for yet, but I agree that CAS does provide pictures. They, they let you know when it's logged into their system. They also invoice me a lot faster, so it's easier for budgeting. I enjoy all that process. I also notice that if there are label errors, that I can reach out to one of the owners and say, hey, this is incorrectly labeled, and they fix it. Now, do I think that CAS needs to not have any errors at all? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they shouldn't have any, any errors. I shouldn't have to correct their work. But it, it does not happen nearly as frequently as early on. And uh, and the fact that they can pull it out of the shipper box before it gets shipped to me and fix it, and they usually do that within a day or two, and, and then uh, it comes back to me, you know, safe and sound with the correct label, I, I like that. I've also had items arrive to me damaged, and they fix those. Um, it's I, I don't know what that process looks like. If you re receive a graded item from AFA, I have no idea what that process is like. I've never had to do it with AFA, luckily, but... Uh, their cust AFA's customer service leaves something to be desired. Their ordering process leaves something to be desired. And, and I'll go through that in a little bit more detail in a little while. But that, that's a great comment. Um, next up, I wish there would be better transparency on turn times with each company. The ship to me your toys and we'll send them back to you sometime is okay when sometimes means two to six weeks. But when it means four to ten months, no, it's not okay. And I agree with this comment as well. We're going to talk more about UKG's turnaround times and how good they are relative to AFA and CAS a little bit later on in this video. But I think where it would really help with both companies, both AFA and CAS, is not only showing you when it was logged into the system, but where it is in the queue. I don't think it would be that hard to do that. I don't. I really don't. I think that they could have a section on their website that says, see where your item is in grading. And it would have an estimated completion date, which AFA does provide, in all fairness to them. But it would be nice to know where it is in the queue. I've got some, some friends who have submitted items to CAS, and they already got them back. And their queue date, their date within the queue, was actually later than some of the items that I sent in. And I got a, I got a problem with that. I think that, that if my item was sent earlier, it should be... Uh, it should be graded first. So there's clearly some wiggle room there. And in all fairness, they were loose items versus mint on card. But in my opinion, mint on card items should be easier to grade than loose graded items. And CAS does have separate departments for loose versus packaged items. But, uh, you know, I, I guess it just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. And I think that CAS should have better transparency there. AFA absolutely needs better transparency. They got even less transparency than CAS does, in my opinion. So uh, transparency is a big issue with collectors, 
And uh, it's, it's a hot button topic that I've heard from many collectors that I think needs to be improved upon. And it shouldn't be that difficult. Clearly, there has to be some kind of internal process at both CAS and AFA that lets the employees know where they are in the queues and, and where the orders are and things like that. So if, if that exists, which we know it has to exist, why doesn't that show for the customer? To me, that's a no-brainer, and it would add a lot of value to us and would give us a better idea of when those items are coming back, especially if you're traveling. For example, my latest AFA batch, they notified me that it was shipped. Well, the problem was I was in Mexico when those items were shipped, so I had to pay extra to UPS to have those delivered on a specific day. And it's frustrating from that perspective, knowing that an item's in transit with about three or $400 worth of items, and then I've got to go and pay extra shipping to get them delivered on a specific day because I'm out of the country. There's no way to kind of change the shipping date uh, where a signature is required, which I do like. Um, but I think that something needs to change there, in my opinion, in terms of transparency as to when it's going to come and where it is in the shipping or when it is in the in the shipping grading or excuse me, in the grading process. So I think that's very realistic to ask for. Imperial Cargo Base says, very interesting. Thanks for conducting this experiment and sharing your results. I wish AFA would create an online submission form because the current manual paperwork is tedious. Well, AFA promised this at the end of last year, and I talked about this in a video probably in November or December of last year, where they made this big grand announcement where they said that, that the online submission process was coming, that their new website was coming for January of 2022. Well, here we are in June of 2022, and absolutely nothing has changed. Hey, AFA. Netscape and America Online called and they want their website back. All right, your, your website is atrociously out of date and the ordering process is absolutely abysmal. I have to print out manually the order form and fill it out by hand and then make a copy of it for my records, make a copy of it obviously for the box that I'm sending to AFA. If you try to use their quote unquote online submission form, it cuts off everything all the wording that you, you spent all this time typing in, it gets cut off no matter what you do with the printer margins. It's completely terrible. There's there's literally no online option with AFA that works. And uh, the fact that they promised this is is and had not delivered it is kind of sad. And I know that they've gone through recently the acquisition Diamond, Distri Diamond Partners, Diamond Distributors, bought AFA, and I'm sure it's on the way and all that, but it is six months past when they said their website and their online order process was coming. With CAS, if the item has been graded previously, it is so easy to add an item to my cart, pay for it, however you want to pay for it. You can do PayPal credit if you want to. You can pay credit card, whatever, however you want to do it. It is so easy to order with CAS, and the fact that AFA makes their order process so tedious and terrible is really a shame. And uh, I think that they need to do something about that sooner rather than later. They're, they're taking their time with it, that's for sure. This is a long post, but I wanted to comment. I wanted to share this with you. And this is in response to my comment about in the video, as well as on the Facebook Rogue Five Toys group, uh, where I said that nobody's really winning right now except for the grading companies. And this comment says, nope, the sellers are, are winners as well. It's creating a false economy based on the scarcity of graded items, which are in demand due to the influx of new buyers and buyers looking for investment grade pieces. Legacy graded items have gone up in price due to this scarcity. And uh, there's some additional comments here that I'll let you read as I talk. And this is a great comment. I, when, I, when I said that nobody's really winning here except for the grading companies, I was really discussing the dynamic between the submitter the owner of the item, and the grading company. I wasn't really talking about sellers and resale items, but this is a great point, and it's a valid point. Sellers of graded items are certainly winners right now in the current market environment for graded Star Wars or any other kind of toy collectible because people are not willing to wait these insane wait times, at least here in the U.S., and we'll talk more about that later on. Uh, so 
they're willing to spend a little bit more to get uh, to get items that are already graded. And I am guilty of that. I, I am buying more already graded items now because I don't want to deal with the turnaround times right now that we're experiencing in the U.S. And as a result, you got to pay up for it, especially on eBay, because it's a competitive environment for graded items. People just don't want to deal with the hassle or they've never uh, submitted items themselves previously for grading. They're afraid to, or they just don't want to deal with it. They're afraid the item might come back at a lower grade. And th that goes to the second part of this video. Uh, people have become accustomed, accustomed to sellers selling mid to higher grade items, which, ha which have normally been graded as ungraded. And so what he's saying there is that, hey, look, I've got this really quote unquote minty item. I hate that word, by the way, minty. Take that item Put it in the trash compactor. Never use it again because it's a terrible term. But people are now trying to get graded item prices, closed eBay sales or hakes, God forbid, graded sales prices on ungraded items. And you just can't do that. I'm sorry that, that you're putting all of the risk on the buyer to, that is going to grade what it says it is, that it doesn't have ink touch up, that it won't get cracked in shipping if it's a mint on card Kenner item, for example. And they're putting all of the risk, all of the grading risk on the buyer. And that's not fair. If you're going to be taking that risk as the buyer, you should get a discount on the purchase price for that item relative to an already graded item. And some sellers are not doing that, especially on eBay. eBay sellers have just gotten stupid, some of them, with their prices for ungraded Star Wars items. So that's a great point, And I really think that it was worth sharing in the video. But uh you know that he's talking about sellers and how they're really the ones winning right now and and there is a certain factor that's involved there that people are paying more they're paying an even bigger premium than they should for already graded item because of this artificial scarcity created by the long turnaround times at least here in the US FF Bowler 300 says Always love your videos. Keep up the great work. I had a question for you. What, in your opinion, is the best tool or site to look up actual sold prices for AFA and CAS loose graded vintage Star Wars figures? I mean, I normally just check out sold items on eBay, but if there's another more reliable source that is free, um, no, uh, I don't think there really is. The only free one really is my is my videos. Uh, you know, there are some other YouTubers that do cover. Uh, pricing and things like that, but that's why I, I kind of started that you know, back during lockdowns in 2020 was that there really is not a great resource for finding the prices for graded items. There is the app on your phone called Star Wars Tracker that is a paid service now though. It is very good. It's very good and it does track prices, but it, it does include loose ungraded. It includes mint on card. It includes graded items. So that's one resource, but you do have to pay for it. Uh, otherwise, I, I try to provide as much data as I can for you out there, but it's just going to take a little bit of work. If it's a rare, put it this way, if it's a rare item that doesn't come up regularly, as I've talked about in many, many vintage and TVC market updates, you're going to be paying a lot for it. That's just the way it is. And Hake's data from recent sales, like this special Star Wars auction event that they just had, there was a lot, a lot of really rare items in that in that auction. And as a result, the prices were stratospheric. So you're going to have to pay up. If it's an item that you've been looking for, waiting for to show up, you're going to have to pay more for it. That's That's been the case for me, uh, for items that I've wanted. But uh, there's not great resources out there. I certainly don't have the time to put together spreadsheets for everybody. That's just not something I'm, I'm interested in doing. But uh, best of luck to you. But it's just what you're going to have to start familiarizing yourself. And luckily for me, Fortunately, that because I make these stupid videos, I, I start to, to get a feel. You know, it's not exact. It's not always exact. Certainly, I make mistakes in these videos. But I start to get a feel for what stuff sells for. So when an item comes up that I want, if it's a price that in the back of my mind seems fair, then I'm going to go for it if I have the money to do it. And I, that's what I'd recommend is just taking time. I recommend this, especially to new collectors. There's a lot of new collectors, especially in the vintage Star Wars world right now, um, because the Mandalorian has pulled in new collectors. And there's a lot of alternative investment type people who are tired of the swings with stocks and with cryptocurrency. And the fact that real estate is now flattening out a little bit. Um, they're looking for another way to get high returns. 
And this is what my channel is about, is about looking at toys and looking at comics as an alternative investment vehicle. I'm not saying you have to do that. But certainly there is an investment aspect related to these toys and comic books that more people are starting to recognize. And uh, I, I know that my collection has certainly gone up a lot in value. If you guys have any kind of vintage or TVC or comic books, your collections have gone up over the last few years especially. So um, whether you like it or not, it is an investment vehicle. I'm sorry, it just is. And I, I know that it leaves a bad taste in some longtime collector's mouths. And they don't want to hear that, but it's the truth. With the prices where they are today on comic books and on toys, they are an investment. I'm sorry, but they just are. And, uh, you know, you're going to have to just familiarize yourself if you're new to this world. And uh, best of luck to you. You know, that's, that's the fun part of this is that, you know, while my passion for Star Wars is not related to the money, at the end of the day, if all of this stuff gets set on fire, I'm not going to die. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to be completely overwhelmed with sadness. Okay. It's just toys. It's just comic books. It's just printed paper. All right. So, you know, it's not the end of the world, but it is a small portion of my investment portfolio of stocks and real estate. And now to a certain extent, a small sliver of that is toys and, and comic books now. So Edward Streets or strike, I don't know how you pronounce your name. I'm sorry. Just a little FYI, and if you didn't know, I talked with Chad over at AFA a long time ago when AFA grades figures as far as the bubble is concerned. If the figure has an inner bubble that is graded, that is graded as well. And I think that's an important point there because I didn't look closely at the inner tray for some of these items I just got back. They could have had some scuffs. They could have had some dings. They could have been put in by the factory at, in an incorrect angle that caused creasing or crimping, things like that. So those are factors that I did not talk about, and I, th I think that's a great point by Edward. Uh, so you can have a perfect outer bubble and have an inner bubble that has little areas pushed in or crinkled. It will lower the bubble grade, as it should. So that's a really great point. Also, with carded figures, if a card back has three flaws on the back of the card, card back, like three little creases in three different places, that is an automatic 80. Just wanted to share some knowledge. This is great points. Now, going back to my Ahsoka that were graded 80 plus, the, the, tip, the vintage collection 80 plus Ahsoka that I just got back from AFA. I've, I'm sorry, but it is not an 80 plus. I'm sorry. It, ha, it didn't even have millimeter sized kind of minor pulling on the back of the card. It did not have any creases. It did not. So I don't know what they looked at. I'm not going to agree with every single item in terms of the grade I get back. At the end of the day, it is a human process, so there's going to be human error. And whether the human error is on my part or the greater's part, I don't know. In my opinion, in my opinion, the greater was wrong and I am right. But I've been wrong before. I'm going to be wrong again, and that's just part of it. And that's kind of the, and honestly, that's the fun of it, right? Sometimes items come back higher grades than I expect. Sometimes items come back right online. Some, you know, right in line with my expectations. Sometimes they come back like that Ahsoka that came back 80 plus that I've sent, sent on to a Patreon supporter. Sometimes they come in lower than I expected. And that's to me is why I have this channel and why I enjoy grading stuff. It's just kind of fun to see what stuff comes back at. And I'm not spending milk money. I'm not spending rent money or mortgage money on this stuff. It's just a, a hobby of mine. And, uh, and that's part of the process. Starkiller, he says... Great experiment. Have to agree. Both a terrible turnaround times. Five to six months is just way too long. Yes, it is. Do I expect it to change in the near term? No, I don't. As for Big Bad Toy Store, I've also noticed their, their collector grade items have significantly dropped in terms of quality. There are absolutely, they are absolutely or obviously bumping more up from standard grade items to keep up with demand. I think that's absolutely happening. And I've got some more commentary on that in a second. But uh, in my opinion, big, bad toy store, collector grade stuff, which we pay extra for. We pay extra for that. They are not nearly as good as, uh, as they used to be. And uh, that's just a fact, in my opinion. Uh, now, is it because Hasbro is rushing through the manufacturing and packing and shipping process? Maybe they're not putting them in quite as delicately as they used to. I think that's a possibility. But I also do think that big, bad toy store knows that they have... A certain number of items within a sealed Hasbro case that they receive that are truly collector grade. And if it's on the edge, 
what used to go back towards the standard items is now being kind of wiggled over to the collector grade items and they're charging more for those and as a result we as collectors are suffering so in my opinion that's happening right now there's no doubt about it uh steven finocchiaro i hope i'm pronouncing your name right i'm sorry i had to return all of the collector grade items i bought from big bad toy store i am picky and there is no way that those packages that i sent back would have even been worthy of an 80 plus grade as i talked about in several videos um, dating back to when I first started this channel, I believe in August of 2019. Don't quote me on that. It might have been 2018. My memory is terrible. I'm an old man, so I can't remember everything. But I would send cases and cases of big bad toy store collector grade items to AFA. This is kind of even before I knew about collect collector archive services. I would send items to AFA and I might get one or two items that came back less than a 90 grade or a 9.0 on the modern scale. Now it's the regular thing. And sometimes I get them from, you know, collector archive services. Sometimes their grades are not quite as strict as AFA. Um, I don't know. You know, that's my personal opinion that they're, they grade about a half a point higher. I've even gotten some back from them that are 80 pluses or 80s. So I, I think it's a real thing that Big Bad Toy Store has to improve their collector grade quality stuff. Will it happen? Probably not. Probably not. Uh, to quote Gordon Gecko in Wall Street, the movie, greed is good. Well, greed is not good if you are a collector. Greed is good if you are the toy distributor or the toy retailer like Big Bad Toy Store because collectors are going to be paying that extra three bucks to you and we're not necessarily getting collector grade items. So... Uh, just be aware of that if you decide to go with collector grade items from Big Bad Toy Store now, that they may not be quite as nice as they used to be. Dog46 Golf says, great video. I tend to prefer the CAS acrylic and automatic three-tier grading. If all things were the same and, and cost and time and all, which grading company would you pick? I think that um, it depends on the item. It depends on the item. I have some items that I only send to CAS because they are the only game in town. And they will remain the only game in town, especially vintage Polish bootlegs, for example. They're the only people that grade them now. Um, if I have a really nice custom piece I want to do, like those really cool retro robots that are Russian bootleg customs that are one of 300 made. And I had them custom encased and custom displayed. CAS is the de facto standard when it comes to custom acrylic stuff. That's just a fact that will never change. They do fantastic work there. Now, I recently picked up a vintage Kenner Star Wars item, mint on card, that is as close to flawless as you'll ever see. And I want it AFA graded because I want to see what they come back with it on. And uh, to me, I think that long term on the resale for that item, whenever, when and if I ever resell it, or more likely when my wife resells it after I'm dead and buried, having it AFA graded with an archival case is going to be... Uh, the price premium that it fetches at Hakes or wherever will be more than with CAS. Um, it's not always the case. You know, loose graded figures, I think, are about equal, maybe slightly to AFA's advantage. But um, there are certain items that I'm going to use AFA for. Now, the other thing I'll mention is that AFA's turnaround times at their very archival tier are about three months right now. Two months to get it invoiced and then about a month to turn it around. Uh, that's pretty attractive to me to get something back in three months. You got to pay for it. You got to pay for it. It's about $125 to do that plus shipping, but I'm willing to do that with this item I just got back in. So I'm, I'm excited to get that one back and I'll share it with you on the channel when it comes back in. Uh, how much do you think BBTS lowering their standards versus AFA heightening their standards caused the grades I got in my latest unboxing? I think that it's majority because of BBTS. I don't think AFA standards have really changed all that much, if at all. Uh, I think Big Bad Toy Store standards for collector grade have dro dropped pretty dramatically. So that's my personal opinion on that. Next up, Pat O'Brien says, Great experiment. Both need to get their turnaround times down a lot. Yes, they do. It also irks me that proof cards with no figure or bubble are twice the price for one-third of the grading. I agree with that. It's 100 bucks to get a proof card graded with CAS and probably about the same with AFA. Prototype type toys are very, very expensive to grade. They charge you about double. I don't know why. I don't know why. I, I, I think it's kind of ridiculous, but 
That's what they do. Uh, Kevin Brown says, I was at Celebration and chatted with AFA for a minute at their booth. They said that part of the reason for the slowdown was that people were submitting massive amounts of figures. So they are considering putting a, a limit on how many can be sent at once. Um, that's an interesting point. I think that um, there will be a lot of people that get mad about that if they decide to put a limit on how many items that you can send in. But it certainly would help with turnaround times, I would think. Um, I don't know. Uh, they also did say they believe they are about four to five months turnaround, which is exactly what my experience has been. Um, he also asked if the economy and express tiers were ever going to come back, and the answer was no. Big shocker. They have zero incentive to bring back their less ex expensive tiers. If they're running it at five months right now, and they are inundated with new submissions, AFA has zero incentive to bring back those really inexpensive tiers. I think that's a that's gone the way of the dodo. We will never see those tiers again. So be prepared for that. For those of you who are sitting on piles of stuff right now and we're waiting for those less expensive tiers to come back, don't bother. Don't bother. They are not going to come back. Uh, the tiers that are on their website and available right now that are more expensive are going to be the de facto standard AFA and uh, that won't change unless we have a massive depression. If we have an economic depression, then yes, then maybe they'll come back. Uh, Barry Scott says, I talked to both AFA and CAS at Celebration, and AFA said they're running four to five months and CAS six months. Again, that's what I talked about in my turnaround time part two video, and uh, we'll see if those change over the course of the year. Um, I tend to favor AFA, however, or anyhow, and this only reinforces that. However, if I had vintage Kenner mocks with, with a bubble that I was concerned about breaking, I would go with CAS. I saw their bubble protection service or bubble protection system, BPS, that they just came out with. And for those of you unaware of what I'm talking about, CAS now has a layer that goes over the front of vintage Kenner cardbacks for only the first 21 figures for Star Wars cardbacks and for ESB cardbacks. Again, for the first 21 figures, characters. And uh, that's available now. You pay a little bit extra for it. And I do have one of those coming back soon from CAS. I have a 31 back ESB Death Squad Commander that I paid to have the BPS technology added to it. So on my channel, in the next month or so, we will take a closer look at it, and I'm going to be brutally honest, good or bad. So we'll, we'll see how it looks. My concern is, his, is Barry's concern that the bubble protection sheet is very shiny. So it may not display that great relative to having one without that layer of acrylic over top of it. So we'll see. My gut says that when you have certain lighting, it's not going to display that great. Without having like, you know, can lighting like I have in my collection room, uh, if you have the lights off or you have your lights lower, or if you don't have can lighting overhead like I do, it'll probably display a little bit better. We shall see. But I wanted to do it. I just wanted to give it a try. And mainly is because for you guys, I wanted to show you guys what it's like. It's not very expensive to do. It's like 15 bucks or, or even less than that. So I think it's worth a try. I'm going to give it a go, and, and I'll give you my assessment of it whenever it comes back. Adam Berry, Patreon supporter, uh, he says, this is interesting, John. In terms of UKG over here, it's about five months turnaround time for standard TVC three and three quarter inch mocks. Uh, it's about $32 of, of US dollars, or, or you can add $24 to that cost for six weeks fast track turnaround time. So think about that. Over If you're over in the UK right now or in Europe and you send something into UKG to get graded, you could pay $24 extra for a total of $56. And you get your item back in six weeks. Six weeks. Over here, we're paying the exact same amount at both AFA. You're paying more at CAS, slightly more at, a, at CAS for five to six months Five to six months. That is insanity that UKG can turn their items over for standard mint on card items in six weeks while we in the US have to pay six, you know, have to pay the same amount and get them back in five to six months. And that to me is why we as collectors have to speak with our wallet. I'm sending in less. I'm definitely going to be sending in less over the next six months until I see these turnaround times improve. I'm not asking for six weeks. I think that's an unrealistic number. I do think that 12 weeks is realistic. AFA and CAS should have standard mint on card and loose vintage Kenner Star Wars figures turnaround times back to three months or less 
and I'm speaking with my wallet. I'm not going to be sending in nearly as much, if any at all, unless it's super hot items like the mint on card I just got back in. Tim Day, he also shared some thoughts on UKG and pricing. He says, I paid UKG 250 pounds plus VAT, so about 300 pounds for a silver membership. It allows for three lots of 20 figures to be sent over a year for a six-week turnaround time. So think about that. 300, 300 pounds equates to about, let's call that 390 US dollars. And you get 60 loose graded figures back over the course of that year in six weeks. That is mind-blowingly cheap relative to what we have to pay at AFA and CAS for memberships. I'm not renewing my CAS membership because of turnaround times. I'm certainly not going to get an AFA membership. So that is that is it's just unbelievable. Each loose figure is $25 plus fat, so about 30 pounds. 25 pounds plus fat, which is 30 pounds. And so for 2,100 pounds, I can get 60 figures graded in a year for six weeks. So it's the membership fee plus 2,100 pounds for 60 figures. That is a, a great deal. UKG by far has the best service turnaround time and prices in the world. And uh, I hope that AFA and CAS take note and compete with them because their membership costs are too expensive. Too expensive to renew at CAS, too expensive at AFA for what you get. I'm not paying it. And to, in my opinion, it's not worth it. So anyway, thanks so much for all these great comments and questions. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thanks for watching and I'll be back soon.